Okay, well, first of all, all the sessions coming up, you're going to have to go to because I'm opposite of everything. I own a restaurant, so I drink all the time, so that's good. So I'll join him, even though I'll be teaching. Uh, time management, I just said to my team, you better go to that because I wrote the book about how to be crazy, right? So they'll go and take notes. But <clears throat> one of the things I do want to say, and I'd like to just have, if you can turn the lights up for a minute, let's have the millennials stand up. Turn the lights up if we can so I can see the millennials, if that's at all possible. How many do we have out there? One, two, three. Some of you are standing up, I don't believe you. Okay, that's all right. Okay, all right, we got about 20 of you. Have a seat, thank you very much. So here's the deal. I was a millennial. Were some of you millennials ever? Come on, you guys. Paul, come on. We're millennials together. You see, I was a millennial. I started in this industry in my 20s. My very first job in the conference center industry was working for Burt Cabanas at the Woodlands Inn and Conference Center in Texas. Now, I got to tell you, that was a long time ago. Yeah. And when I went down there and applied for a job, and he was a GM, he said, we don't have any. Uh, I got, my husband got transferred down there. I lived in Chicago, had a great life. You know, and so I tried to stay back in Chicago, but whatever. You, got, you, know, you get married, you go. So what happened is I went down. He goes, we don't have any positions. I mean, Gretchen, who some of you know is here, she had the job. There were, you know, all these people were like senior working in the hospitality industry. I had a meeting planning company. I basically was a 10 percenter in the city of Chicago repping restaurants, loving life. So I said to Bert, you know, well, here's the deal. I could work for straight commission. I could do just like your weekend stuff. Okay, well, you know, you don't have an office, you don't have a desk, so I sat outside like Gretchen's desk, you know, I sat by her. And, you know, you have to then bring in business, and then if you're really good, and you actually bring in some revenue on the weekends, because we're a conference center, and we need business starting on Friday and Saturday and leaving on Sunday, then you can stay. That's how it all started. But nobody cared that I was a young in my 20s. How about your ideas? They just would say, shut up and listen to us, right? Think about it. The millennials today have a voice like no other. I have to kind of chuckle, because did you notice some of the millennials, they came up with their iPads for their speeches, right? Because they don't like paper. This year, all of our classes went, everything is on their iPads. You should see us, some of myself, other trainers, training with no book. I'm on my iPad. I cannot even see the page number. I'm like, what, what page is that? They go, well, it's on your iPad. I go, and I can't see it. And then I try to make it bigger, and then it switches to the next page. But I'm learning. I'm really learning. But I'm here to tell you that every millennial that stood up in this room needs a baby boomer to lead them. Absolutely. And to disrupt the status quo, you have to have the guts and the ability to give and receive feedback. This business of we're just going to turn it up on its nose is not going to work. The conference center industry has been challenged like it's never been challenged in 33 years. And I know that because I was a part of it 33 years ago. Every hotel company out there has copied the model without paying the dues. And that's the truth. They can't call themselves IX certified. They just have created great meeting setups. And they've copied the model. So what I want to do this morning is I want to get your head wrapped around what you need to do to disrupt this status quo. You have to be challenging. And you've got to challenge everybody, your staff, the general managers in this room. You have to really understand innovation. Food and beverage, I'm glad we've got somebody doing something on wine and upselling. It's the biggest thing in most hotels right now. It's 50% of the overall profit in catering. Everybody is coming up with what we call next level dining, taking a room like this and making it look like a Longhorn Steakhouse because no one wants to stay and eat in the same restaurant over and over. So we want to keep that, that food and beverage on property. And the, the CMP was always our ability to do that. But now everybody wants to take something off and do something creative. So I'm going to take a few minutes and talk about how you can disrupt that status quo. First and foremost, you got to understand the buyers. And it is not an exaggeration that I spend 50 out of 52 weeks a year on the road. That's not, that's no like speaker talk. I landed last night at LAX at 2 a.m. I got to the hotel at 3. 
I slept for three and a half hours. I really, you know, like went, really? Okay, because my plane was broken. I said, oh, great. So we landed in St. Louis. I liked that because I hadn't been there in a while. And uh, I will tell you that the pilot is trying to explain to us that we have an operational problem. We can't really fly it for more than four hours, but don't worry because it will fly four hours. I said, that's just great to know. And so while he's talking, the guy next to me is, you know, on flightstatus.com, and he's looking everything up about, you know, where the planes are. I mean, you know, it's amazing how we're figuring out all these things. But this is the buyer of today. They are socially more informed and empowered. They go online, just like you have a touch of an app, to be able to look at the agenda and the attendee list. Everything they do, they do online. 80% of these buyers are strongly influenced online. 60% of the sales process starts ever before a salesperson talks to the customer. Yet, we shop many of the conference centers in this room, as well as hotels. We shop them online, we shop them on the phone, and we get on planes and we fly there and we shop them in person. There's work to be done, my friends. Not all are doing a great job, not all are doing a bad job, but marginal is not going to cut it. You have to fight for this business like you've never fought for it because in the reality of all these customers looking online, they still like to buy from people. I, we have already been involved in four client for focus groups, and it's only March this year. One for MPI, one for a hotel company, one for HSMAI, and one for NACE. And in every single one of them, in the clients, so these were independent meeting planners, corporate meeting planners, CVEN, all these, every single bit of the business, said at the end of the day, even when you're getting a CVEN lead, there's no reason you can't pick up the phone if you have a legitimate question to ask a client. But you have to look at how your CVEN RFPs are going back. And CVEN, I believe, is here. So you want to talk to them. And if your staff hasn't been trained by them, somebody needs to come in, you have to have Steven come in and show you how your RFPs actually look when they go to the client. How do your proposals look when someone's reading them on an iPad? You know, today, you should have one of your salespeople that are back at the hotel or catering, conference services, meeting managers, whatever it might be, send you a proposal and read it on your iPhone or your iPad and see how it looks. You have to understand how these customers are buying. Now, I do believe that the meetings business is still the most lucrative business you can be in if you understand food and beverage as well, and the contribution of food and beverage, and you understand how to train people to sell, really sell. You have to have trust and credibility. We are not telling the IAC story right. I ask all the time, what does IAC mean? Every time I am in a conference center or any venue that has an IAC designation, and the stories are all different. Nobody knows really well. It means that we have better chairs. I go, oh, because I just was at that hotel, and they're, they're not with IAC, but they have good chairs. Well, ours are better for your back. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can sit long. I go, we, we stand a lot. Well, then we've got some good standing areas. Okay, so you have to go back and say, does anybody really know the story? Does anybody know the history? See, people love stories. People love history. People love to know where it all began. Even the millennials, they like to know that because like their grandpa was part of starting it. Yes, I'm serious. They like to know it. So you have to begin to think about how do I compete faster and stronger and take this to market? The only way to do this is to make sure that every leader in this room is 100% responsible for training and developing every single person that joins your team, every single one of them. Now, you might say, well, I've got HR, and I've got talent management, and I've got a training. Well, that's fine. That's fine. They can run the, the process, but you need to be at every orientation. You need to tell the story. You need to tell the IX story and then the story of your own brand, and then you need to tell the story of your own destination. Every time. With passion, by the way. Not hi, I'm the GM, I'm the direct sales marketing. Yeah, you're lucky to be here. Yeah. We only hired a few people this year. It's gonna be a tough year. Oh yeah. We had a lot of cancellations. I'm gonna expect you to bring home the bacon. We'll fry it up. 
but I'm going to tell you. It's tough. Oh, that's motivating. Wow, I'm so excited. And then we change market segments every five and a half minutes. I love that too. I love when we call and we're shopping at one of the conference centers and we say, you know, hi, uh, I'd like to talk to somebody about booking a meeting. And your area code, please? I say, why is that like, what is that? What does that mean? Why do you need that? Well, we have everything divided up by area code. I go, well, do you want my cell phone area code? Do you want my Skype area code? Do you want my London office? Do you want my Shanghai office? Or do you want my Southern California office where I'm hardly ever there? And then they stand there like on the phone. Um, well, anyone will do. It's ridiculous. See, account development and alignment is the way you drive business. You cannot continue to change these strategies and these approaches every 15 minutes for the flavor of the month. The only way we can help the sales and the conference team, as well as everybody else that is in charge of driving revenue, is to teach them how to communicate those messages in a very effective way. You know, we're doing more etiquette training than we've ever done before. Now again, you millennials, don't make a note. I don't like her. This isn't about you personally. There's only 10 or 12 of you here. I mean, look at the college. I love this college band. Michelle leaned over and said, wow, that's probably the earliest they've been up in a long time. Yeah, that's what she said. I said, yeah, I mean, they get to wear pajamas and like flip-flops. Can you imagine? I was thinking I should run up and change. I mean, this is, they're fun. They're a band, right? But think about it. They come out of school. They go to work. Maybe they were trained with their parents on business etiquette, and maybe they weren't. But I will tell you, we know that some of them can't even shake a hand properly. They're so online, and not you, so don't get mad and write down, you don't like me, you young ones. It's not you. They can't even write a proper email, some of them. Their, their proposals, they're just form because somebody has written one. This is absolutely not going to disrupt the status quo or contin continue to move you to the next level. So you're going to hear a lot about trends. And I love that we have all these different educational sessions going on because I am a firm believer that you have to keep learning. It's an ongoing process. And IAC supports that because that's what Conference Centers is all about. Because if people didn't come to Conference Centers to have meetings and to engage and to learn, they would just do it all online. And they would have meetings on Skype and go to meetings. We know that we want people to be with people, and so do the people. But some of the trends that we have heard just since January, customers want the best. There can be no more marginal. Absolutely none. From the point somebody checks in to the way we get people involved in food and beverage, in the bars, in the restaurants, they want the best. You don't want a bartender who doesn't know about the best new vodka or how to properly make a gin and tonic. The proper glasses, the biggest thing going in the booze business is ice and glasses, right? You don't drink your scotch just neat. You drink it with a big ball of ice. That's what they like, one ball of ice. I love that myself. I love watching that bartender make that. It's so fun. Entertain me. Entertains me. Yeah. I say make another one. They want it now, and they want to be first. That's why when you go to these sessions, you've got to hear some of the new exciting things because you've got to take that back to market. They want human connection. They want people who understand how to deal with people. Even your site visits have got to sizzle. Everybody knows about crowdsourcing, and you know Marriott has just done a huge crowdsourcing meeting, and maybe some of you went to this, but we got to go, and it was all about the millennial generation. Now, again, this isn't about the 20 of you or 12, 15, however many, but the millennial generation, there was over 1,000 people in the meeting, all millennials, except for the old ones, and we were in the back. I had to wear my glasses to see the slides. And they, uh, all the designers of Marriott said, we want to find out what the next generation of, of corporate hotel looks for you. And it came out loud and clear that none of the millennials use a desk. Now, I'm in the back. I got a bad back. I'm having issues. You know what I'm saying? So I finally decided I had to raise my hand. I mean, I was allowed to ask questions, by the way, just because of my age. It didn't matter. And I raised my hand, and I said, well, wh why, don't, why don't you use desks? Because we sit on our bed, and we use our iPad. I said, do you eat on your bed? Because that's so annoying to me with the ants and everything. And do you spill the red wine and the white duvet? And they all looked at me like I was crazy. I said, no, I've got a 26-year-old. I know what eating in bed looks like. 
I said, and when you're on a conference call and you're trying to eat and you're trying to do your proposal and you're trying to do Skype, do, do, can they see you like with the pillow behind you? Is that good? Well, hands down, Mary, I said, well, our new generation of hotels, we'll build one. It won't be for everybody. Won't have desks. I said, then what happens when the millennials grow up? And then the new generation will have a new name, by the way, and they'll be totally different than you, right? Because I was also 26. And I'm totally different than the 26-year-old sitting here. So crowdsourcing is when we go to market and we find out what the customer wants. We build hotels around what the customer wants, which is smart. But we are sometimes looking at it too narrow. We've got to begin to understand that there are so many new cutting-edge trends that if you just look at one group and pigeonhole that group, when that group changes, what happens with the new group. You know, products now are, are coming out and are unveiled even before anybody's buying them. Nike unveiled a new shoe that they're uh, selling to runners. I clearly am not a customer, so they didn't ask me any questions. But they went out and said, we want to bring some manufacturing back to the US. And so all their big runner customers that buy a lot of Nike shoes said, well, it's very simple. Just don't stitch the shoe anymore, and you can make those at a decent price here in the U.S. They said, well, like, what do you mean? Just glue the shoe. So there's a new shoe coming out that's very comfortable. Runners love it. It doesn't have any stitching, and it's glued, and it can be made here. So they go out to the consumer. Good idea. Think about if any of you saw New York Fashion Week or Paris Fashion Week and saw some of the 3D designs. The designers, instead of making the actual dress, made it all with paper. So the models walked the runway in 3D design. Now we've seen it in meetings. I've seen several hotels for a wedding do an entire floor plan with actual chairs and tables, not 3D just on a computer, actual paper. So that they can physically see and move chairs around and it's printed with a 3D pr printer. Apps, obviously, you're here part of that. Services and products that give back. So all the things that IAC does, all the things that your independent you know, conference center companies do, you need to talk about that when you're talking to your customer. Barclays, who's a big client of ours, and we do all of their wealth management series around the US and then throughout Europe and then in South Africa. They will not work with any organization as a venue unless there is a lot of give back because they get so much heartache anyway about some of the events they're doing. They publicly talk about the organizations that they're supporting. So we have to make sure we're sharing that with the salespeople. Emerging markets. Everybody in the world is flaunting their heritage, which I love that because it just gives us more holidays. I think that's so much more fun. Right? More gifts, more food. I love that. But you've got to you got, think about it. I live here in Southern California. And at South Coast Plaza in Costa Mesa, they had a bigger Chinese New Year display than when we happened to have landed in Beijing. It was amazing. Amazing. So you have to think about how are we going to continue to incorporate food and, and knowledge. And it's, it's like we just had St. Patrick's Day. Okay, and everybody had the corned beef cooked in the Guinness and the cabbage. And that's really, that's an American Irish dish. I mean, all my Irish friends that live in, in Ireland said, well, we don't have that. I said, well, we're about themes, so don't, don't start with us. You know what I mean? Don't take that away. It's been here a long time, okay? But you've got to educate people so they understand it. Big data, whether you're using Salesforce or Delphi or Daylight, it doesn't really matter. Because if it isn't in Daylight or Delphi or something, it doesn't count. And yet, when we go in and audit these properties, it is scary how much stuff is not in there. We then don't have a global connection. So those of you that are in bigger organizations, the right hand has got to know what the left hand's talking about. The amount of wasted time that we have in BEO meetings and resume meetings and conference meetings, reading the conference planner, reading the BEOs and the resumes to banquets or to operations. It'll be a coffee break at nine. It says that they're Danish. Uh-huh. Yeah, that, it's a sorted Danish. Yeah, then at noon, we're going to do more of a lunch. It's gonna, they're going to be in the, the, the dining, the, the conference dining room. That, uh, yeah, that's what they do every time, every day. Uh-huh. Coffee break, yeah, it's a continuous coffee. We're a conference center, so keep those M&M dishes filled. Really? 
and they're going to go off property. We're catering it at a ranch. Oh, yeah. That means you have to bring the food in a truck. This is a waste of bloody time. This, this is the stuff that other companies are blowing up and changing. The savvy client today who does look at everything online, they expect that you know who they are. So when we're talking to, you know, Goldman Sachs, and we've worked with Goldman Sachs at one of our other properties, and we don't acknowledge that and say, I'm so glad that we're able to finally work with you. I know you work with our, our property in, you know, Chicago or in New York. This is great that we're able to start to connect. When we're not using our resources to be able to prospect within existing customers, the consumers want you to know their data. Recently, we worked with British Airlines. And what they did was for anybody purchasing a first or business class seat, not getting upgraded like, you know, we beg for those seats. These are paid. They pick you up at your home, whether it's at JFK or in London at the big airports, and they drive you to, you know, Heathrow. And so what we did was we did the training with the team that greets them. Americans doing something similar. If you're a platinum executive in a very high level, not just platinum, you'll see global services with United's doing the same thing. They stand right there. There's a red carpet. You pull up. They have everything, all your data on an iPad. They know that you like to be called Cindy versus Mrs. Novotny. You get out of the car. They say, hello, Cindy. Welcome. We're we'll getting you ready for your trip. They have a little device. They slide your passport right on the iPad. They walk you right in. You're checked in. A bell captain is standing right there with the brass you know, cart, just like at a hotel. They take your luggage. They walk you through security, and you're on the plane in about 15 minutes on an international flight. Now, this is because it's big data. That's what customers are looking for. So a few other top trends, just to keep in mind. The meeting planners and why we are going to see Cvent is growing rapidly. And, and, and the other, other sources that are out there like Cvent, but I'll use that as an example. Over 60% of clients today are putting their proposals out on a Cvent type of sourcing because they're looking at strategic meetings uh, management, that's easier for them to source this way, and we have to make sure we understand how to respond to that. It's not going away. When I hear see people roll their eyes, oh, I hate those RFPs, I hate that, I hate that. Well, I just think back to 33 years ago when there wasn't the internet. You do know the internet just celebrated its 25th anniversary. Wow, so funny because that makes us really feel old. So. There was no internet, and everybody was calling, and we actually had walk-ins back in the day. And, you know, you had to look things up in a real file. You know, there's file cabinets, so funny, and little index cards. I kind of like those, like in little recipe boxes. And you had to keep really good notes. So the difference is now it's much easier. But you don't want to pre-populate everything so that it begins to be static. We've got to manage the third-party intermediaries, the Helms Briscoes, the Conference Directs. They're not going away. They're a partner. They're never going away. But you have to know how to work with them. You have to know how to take care of them. Their client is your client. So, yes, they are bringing you business. But if you are not partnering to get that business from that end user, then you're making a big mistake there as well because there's so much more business to be had. Owners are activists. They're vigilantes. Have you met them lately? Are your owners all just nice and say, don't worry about it? Are they? Wow. That's amazing. Because every owner meeting I've been to, they're just going strong. Show me the money. You want renovation? You want new stuff? Bring in the cash. The value of face-to-face -face and, of course, all the online booking tools. So you heard already that things are looking up. And this is great. The best attendance we've had, business is back. But I say steady as she goes. The minute we start to get a little complacent, the minute we start to act like, wow, we've got enough business, we're not as hungry, is the minute the rug gets pulled out from under you. The meeting demand is improving. There's a positive outlook. We are seeing rates go up, but we are seeing in a traditional hotel less food and beverage. Now, that's okay for you because of how you put some of your CMPs together but not all of you are in a traditional mode all the time. One of the reasons that food and beverage is going off property a lot in a traditional hotel, because we've seen a huge shift of that in the last two years, is out of boredom. See, back in the 70s, when I was in the restaurant business, everybody did their parties in restaurants. In Chicago, where I lived and where I worked, 
restaurants were closed on Sundays and Mondays, the big, some of the big ones, because it just was the way it was. So the reason I even started my company, which was repping those restaurants, the 95th and Arnie Morton's restaurants back in the day, was that we would fill those restaurants from all the shows that were in McCormick Place. So the houseware show comes in, I'd call every single customer that was, you know, exhibiting at uh, McCormick Place, and we would sell out a restaurant. Then all of a sudden, the hotels started getting better and more creative in their food and beverage, and for the last 20-some years, then everybody decided to stay on property and do, do meetings and, and dinners. Now all of a sudden, just look in every one of your destinations and every one of your cities. The restaurants are opening, but they have all kinds of venues. The event and party planners and the DMCs are excited to pull them off property to keep that revenue. So you've got to look at how to continue to keep that going. Because although prices are going up, we want to make sure that we sell the true way of the CMP. Now, it's much more creative than it's ever been. I'll give you that. But everybody has copied it. So in order to get away from, well, we're not really IAC, the hotels call it the completely customized package. So they're going to market right up against you saying, well, we can do that too. We can provide your morning and afternoon coffee break. We can do your lunch. We can do different dinners. We can, you know, do dine arounds around the, around the hotel. So you've got to remember one size doesn't fit at all. And part of restructuring and, the, and disrupting the status quo is to go way beyond just some of the regular initiatives, but to really look at how to get creative on that food and beverage side. You've got to make sure that socially everyone is connected. People tweet live from every meeting. They're uploading pictures all day long. They're taking pictures of the food, the speakers, the tables, the flowers. And you've got to make sure that these interactive type meetings are here to stay. Now, for those of you that have a rope course, don't get nervous about this. This came out of one of our uh, recent focus groups. Doesn't mean they'll be gone forever, but people look at it differently. And they love the chef, the Iron Chef, the cooking shows, things that you're already doing. But we can do those ourselves. You don't need to have a DMC taking that, that regular type of business away from you. You want to be able to keep that as much as possible. The customer is busier than they've ever been because they're not traditional meeting planners. Those of you that have been to MPI and PCMA lately know they are vice presidents of sales or they're admins or they're, they're coming out of a, a whole different part of the business. You have to think about how do you connect with all these customers and work with them within the time they have. They're doing more with less. They're less structured. And in some cases, they are not as educated, not college educated, educated on the meetings industry as in the past where we had very dedicated corporate meeting planners. And so we have to be able to educate them on the IAC story. I've talked about the RFP process. You've got to understand their needs. You've got to be able to pick up the phone. You've got to make sure that your RFP jumps off the page. You've got to look at it. Is it customized? Cvent has so many different ways that you can customize that RFP to make it a lot more user friendly. So you've got to look at like what's being sent out from your salespeople. If you haven't inspected what you expect lately, then while you're here, make this an interactive meeting with your own property. Literally, as soon as there's the break, call them and say, here's what I want you to do. I want you to send me a proposal that you sent out yesterday. And, you know, you'll get the standard. Why? What's going on? Am I in trouble? Why? What are you going to show it? I mean, what, 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 which one do you want me to send? No, send, send the last one you sent yesterday. Okay, well, I mean, I, I don't, I, this is very concerning. Then they'll go to HR, just so you know, be ready. Yeah? And then, you know, then you'll get a call from whoever's there. What's going on? I mean, why are you doing this? Why are you causing so much drama while you're away having fun? See, that just tells me there's always issues, right? So you're only as good as yesterday. I'm going to tell you right now. I think some of you have heard me say this a hundred times, but I walk this. I live it every day of my life. I mean, I, I love when I'm speaking to the groups like this because I love it. I get it. I know you. You're by people. But, you know, I'm also speaking to groups like Goldman Sachs and Barclays and law firms. And I have a pit in my stomach. And when I look out there, there's like no one's happy. And I go, wow, why aren't you happy? Just because you're in the financial business. Just because you took my money. Like, you should be happy. You at least sell fun, just so you know. I mean, you might have forgot that, but it is fun. But the past success guarantees you nothing when the rules change.
You got to be curious. You got to study your business. You've got to become a craft, a crafter in this industry. You know, everything is handcrafted. You've got to be handcrafted. You've got to reinvent yourself. You've got to look at some of the things that we're doing now that other people already started doing because whatever got you to this point does not take you into the future. And I'm telling you, this model, which I believe in from my core, is being challenged. And I love that the attendance is the best it's been since the recession because it should get bigger and bigger. But you can't leave this conference and just go back to status quo. That's not going to work. You've got to take everything you've learned and every story, and you've got to understand the passion of what IAC really stands for and the passion of what we can do in these conference centers better than anybody else. You know, sometimes we just wait too long to change. We do. We wait till everybody else does it, till it's really safe to do it. And by then, they've all changed again. You personally have to be the coach of your sales teams and leadership teams. The only way to improve productivity, to enhance creativity, and to score more signed contracts is to be right there neck to neck to ask questions in your morning lineup. And if you're not doing one, why aren't you doing one? It is your time to get everybody ready. It's eight o'clock in the morning and let's get going. What's on, what's on target for today? How many site visits do we have? What's going on? You wanna know as a leader in this room, when an account is at risk, not when you see the lost business report. You wanna get a status update every single week from your team saying this is new from new, this is new from old, and this is new from existing business. So that you, as an executive with your organization, can get on the phone and call some of those new customers and say, wow, I am so excited. We've been trying to get you know, this account for so long. This is great. Thank you. And new from existing. When I hear that a salesperson can't put down a, an account she's already working on for prospecting, but she's calling somebody else new because her boss is saying prospecting calls have got to be 25 a day of people you don't know. Well, I don't know Jane Burrell. I do know Goldman Sachs, but I've never met Jane. Jane's a prospecting call. Let's not be ridiculous. And then new from old. If you haven't had your team already, because my team does it in January, go back to everything we lost the year before, call every single one of them and say, hey, I know we didn't get the business last year. I'd love to talk to you about how it went at XYZ, which is your competitor, and I'd love to talk to you. If they're not doing this stuff, then they're not fighting hard enough for the business. See, look at the offices. These are not just conference centers. These are offices. This is what, when we were in South Africa with Barclays, everybody was sitting on the balls. I tried to set on one, fell right off, almost broke my neck. They said it worked the core. I'm like, wow, I don't know how it works the core. I can barely like talk on the phone. This is how they were working. They all work in fun environments. That's why I love when I hear the millennials say the meetings industry is so exciting because for some of us, we're like, really, what's so exciting about it? So when you think about the client, they work like this. So we have to have a more cutting edge type of approach to this business. This is the way of the future. You know, charging stations, why did it take like forever for that? And now people are like, well, we have charging stations. But yet when I'm still in the guest room, I have to crawl under the desk, see the dust. And by the way, yesterday I found the housekeeper's beeper under my table. I called down, hi, I have your beeper. <gasps> We've been looking for it all day. I said, wow, what was she doing on her hands and knees down there, by the way? It's weird. Right? See, it's amazing how long we take to get things done. You know, I was in a property, and obviously I never mentioned where it is, and this was only last week, and it's a four-day meeting, and it's in a conference center. And they come in to change everything because they're supposed to. It's supposed to be a meetings venue. They start taking all the name tags off. I said, what are you doing with the name tags? We're cleaning the room. I said, I know that, but I, you're putting them in the bin because I've done so much, you know, dump diving, I can't even tell you to find my stuff. I said, no. He goes, if you want this stuff, put it over on that table. I just love that because that is my moment to say, wow, I'm going to call your GM right now. Now, I'm not even working for that hotel. I was working for a corporate client. 
I picked up the phone. I didn't even know that GM. I called, hi, my name's Cindy Devani. I'm here with, and I gave the name of the corporate, it was a law firm. And uh, Bobby, that was his name on his name tag, is standing right here with me, and he clearly doesn't know how to refresh a room in a conference center. He goes, uh, uh, okay. I go, so come on down. We need to do a little coaching. I'm here because I have nothing else to do. You know what I'm saying? There's no close mall, and I can't go out because it's 100 degrees below zero. So you kind of come out here, and we're going to do a little coaching. He was in utter shock. So down he comes, the suits. It's like the army walks in. He comes down, the assistant general manager, the director of food and beverage. The dra- Now there's Bobby about like losing it. I go, Bobby, welcome to your life. We're going to do some training today. He goes, is it just for me? I said, right now it is. I said, but this is how I get business. This is how I prospect. This happens to be a customer I've never heard of before that's IAC, so whatever, right? Well, unfortunately, it wasn't really IAC, I must say. It's a fake one. You know, you've seen the fake ones? It's like buying a fake bag in China. It doesn't work that long, right? So someday you're going to have more time to savor your life, I'm here to tell you. Someday may never come if you sit around and continually just hash this stuff out. Someday will never come if you don't find new clients. In a rush to pursue your life, everything's passing you by, and we forget how to build business. Make no mistake, it is all about new business. New from new, new from old, and new from existing. It's just that simple. If you want an extraordinary 2014, you have got to challenge the status quo. You have got to go back to your properties and say, we are absolutely going to be the best we've ever been. you got to find new ways of thinking. Everybody's in blue water strategy. If I hear it once, I hear it a million times. Everybody's bought every book. Get out to the blue water. Don't be in the red water where the sharks are eating you. I never was by the sharks anyway. Like, really? You know what? We just have to get some of the basics right so that we can then get a little bit more creative. you got to reboot. you got to remember what got you in this business in the first place. This may be the business of meetings, but it's the hospitality industry, and make no mistake about it. Either you like people or you don't, and it shows. I'm sure you know that. You see the people that walk in in the morning. Good morning. Wow, it's only Wednesday. I love those people. I immediately look at them, wow, hi, I don't know you. You don't know me. You need to go home. Do you work here? I go, no, but I'm just giving you some fair advice. You know what I mean? You better get out of here before I fill out my little survey that takes you down. Right? (laughs) Right? Think about it. Go home. See, this is a playbook, not a workbook. Sales is not a race, but it's a journey. It's a lifelong deal. You got to look around. Life is right here, right now. What's going on in your properties is happening right now. Your proposals are being sent out. When was the last time you actually read one? Are they form letters, really? When everything is tweeted in 140 characters or less and we're sending a 42-page contract and proposal, it's ridiculous. There's money to be made. We are tripping over dimes to get to pennies. It makes me crazy. Don't let this slip away. See, I am a firm believer that Everybody says, you know, TGIF, and they get excited for Friday. I really don't like that term because I work seven days a week, and I'm not kidding. Now, when I'm done here, I go home, and uh, Thursday, I'll be in the office in Southern California. But, you know, I got to have a little back surgery. I got to fit that in. You know, he said you can't fly for three weeks, so I'm going to just do a lot of webinars. I said, okay, well, we'll figure that out. But at the end of the day, there's 30,000 mornings, give or take. If you're 26 years old in this room, see the millennials? They got 20,000 left. If you're 54, I'm sorry. Seriously, think about it. It's limitless, but it's not really. When people say, oh, you've got a lifetime. When I hear people say to young people, this is the best time of your life, I say, really? Really? So does it go downhill from here? She's only 28. Every day is the best day of your life. So what are you going to do if you have an extra day? See, selling never stops. I do emails all day long. I take every inquiry that comes to our website. Now, you may call that a control freak. No, I'm not. I take it because I own the company. I want to see the new customers we're getting. And then I just simply send an email back so quick you can't believe it. Yesterday I was in Boston. I'm up three hours before the California office is ever going to open. I get the email from a client in New York City. 
I send back, hey, I'm so excited. This is a new customer. We've never heard from you ever. How did you hear about us? I'm going to have Shelly Marlowe call you as soon as she gets into California. If you need to talk to me before that, I'm actually in Boston, and I can talk. He emailed back within five minutes. This is unbelievable. And step one, check, you're already in the list. See, that's what makes the difference. Where some people get an inquiry, they get an RFP, and it goes to the coordinator. And then the coordinator sends something out and says, I'm the coordinator. What is that? Why do we have a coordinator? We have no secretaries. On Secretary's Day, I get the biggest bouquet of flowers you've ever seen because I'm the secretary for myself. Oh, yeah, it's the biggest bouquet. I send it every year. It comes to me wherever I am. Unbelievable. And the card always says, I know you better than anyone, and I love you. I mean, for, for years, my husband said, wow, who's that from? I said, hmm, not sure. So it never stops. The proposals, the verification of needs, the, the phone appointments, the personal appointments, the presentations. Some of our salespeople cannot present. They walk into a boardroom. We're selling corporate meetings, and they can't even present. They need training. They need skills. And less is more. 25 page proposals are out. Everybody knows that stuff doesn't get you happiness, and stuff doesn't close business. You can throw stuff at them all day long. More chalk keys, more this, more that, more, you know, jump drives with your logo. They're like, why do I even need that? Can you just, uh, I'll just put it in your Dropbox. You're like, oh, good idea. Let me get the Dropbox. Right, this is it. It's all about the experience. If stuff is the only thing we deal with, and how many calls, I say to my team, I, this is your goal. And you got to make it. And in order to make that goal, you're going to have to make a lot of good outgoing calls. And you're going to have to block out a minimum about an hour a day. And we're going to talk to you about that. Michelle's going to walk you through that for those of you that are going to the sales class. Because you have to make sure that we are bringing in enough fresh new business at the rates we deserve. But everybody within the organization has got to create the experience. I position myself as somebody who knows very little. And therefore, I learn a lot. But how many of you sit in meetings just like this? And you'll be at round table discussions, and somebody will bring something up. And then somebody else will say, oh, yeah, I know that. I did that. I did that years ago. Oh, OK. Well, I had a new way. No, we've done that. How about the new young people that you bring into your organization? They come in with so much excitement, right? Because there's few you might want to hire here. They got up. Did you see them? OK? Because I'm a graduating in May. There you go. OK? So they come in. They're all excited. And then what happens is, no, 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 no ideas. I mean, when we interviewed you, we thought you had a lot of ideas. But now we have to tell you how we do it. I know, but I thought we could try a new way. My suggestion for any young people coming into any organization, or actually older generation as well, for the first 30 days, keep a notebook. Write down all your ideas. At 30 days, sit down, review them with your boss. 60 days, keep another list and 90 days, because we deflate people so quickly because no one wants to become a beginner again. See, I love what Picasso said. Every child is an artist. The problem is we lose being an artist when we grow up. We are told how to do things. Instead of everybody sitting down together and rekindling that sense of curiosity and wonder, why do we have to do it this way? and ask the questions. Why can't we change and be different? See, I am about color and fun and excitement and curiosity. And I do believe that the word passion, which was brought up here today, is a combination of love and anger. If you really love this industry, it should royally tick you off when it doesn't go right. That's my definition. When people say, wow, you're heated up, I said, no, it's passion just a little bit over the top. See, life is about all the things that we have. And our ability to get our arms around this means we get excited about our prospects. We look at ways to improve our sales techniques every single day because they do shape the outcome of your business. Is, is the front desk in sync with your sales initiatives? Are the people servicing the rooms in sync with your sales initiative? What changes do you have to implement immediately? What do you have to do to go back and disrupt that status quo? Where are you really on the sales journey? What about your market segments? We have people calling in geographic territories that have no business. The business has all moved out. I mean, those of you that call on anybody here in California, they're all going to Texas, so be careful. Texas is going to have a bigger market. 
You gotta engage, you've gotta discover, you gotta understand that the positioning of where you are is not determined by how we used to be. And if we always continue to position our marketing strategy, our business plans, the way in which we go forward, we are gonna lose. Because every single day, at the stroke of midnight, every day, there's a lot of seconds deposited into your bank account. Time is very valuable. It is very important. There's so much wasted time on the property, and you know it. We said in meetings, after meetings, where we pontificate over stuff that is absolutely ridiculous. We cannot do that anymore. If you want to revolutionize how you're gonna go after this business and change and compete and put IAC right back to where it needs to be, which was a serious force 33 years ago to be reckoned with, a serious force, which is why everybody copied you. They copied you. They can't put IAC on their logo, but they copied you. Nobody copies anything that's worthless. Have you ever noticed? They copy things that are good. So what are you gonna go back and eliminate? What are you gonna get rid of? Go in, when you go to the time management workshop, I'm sure she's gonna give you some of these tips. But I'm talking about the basic stuff we know. The meetings that go on and on. Sales meetings, marketing meetings, operation meetings. When we're not even standing at the front desk giving feedback to the person who is not doing their job right. That's more important than setting everybody down. So leaders here, please pay attention, because I'm not kidding. Every time we go into a property that's in trouble, because that's when we're, we're called in, we look at the leaders. And when I look at the salespeople, this is a group I was just with, and the salespeople, you know, the problem is our director of marketing doesn't have a clue. He calls meetings at nine o'clock and never is there. And then at 10 o'clock, he leaves property, doesn't go back till three. And I looked at her, I said, like, why don't you tell someone? Like, I would be on the phone. I'm a tattletaler from way back, right? Don't waste my time. Where is our business going and how are we going to get there? So your goals are simply a dream with a purpose. But you got to put it to paper and you have to hold people accountable. 80% of Americans say that they don't even write down their goals. But I will tell you right now that you see people that write down their goals earn nine times as much money as those that don't. And it's a fact. You all have a busy life. You got a lot going on. So do I. I may live with no balance and love it. I still have a life. I've been married 33 years. Well, I do travel. I think that's helpful. Mm-hmm. Yeah? But I'm telling you, I raised my daughter. I took her on the road. She graduated from Texas A&M. She now runs our office in Houston. I mean, it's fine. She didn't write an article and put it like in Life Magazine about me or anything. It's all okay. You have a life and you've got a lot going on. But I promise you, you've got to be specific about it. Because if you aim at nothing, you're going to hit it every time. Every single time. Every day when you come into work, you need to make sure everybody knows what we're doing today, what's on target. Be what you describe. You don't walk into a restaurant and just say, can I have some food? I love restaurants now. I'm a vegan, right? See, I'm vegan intolerant. I don't like vegan. Yesterday I had to have a vegan lunch. I was so hungry on the plane, I asked for two Sundays. yeah. We had to have a vegan lunch to like like vegan. I'm sure there's some vegans here because everybody's vegan and gluten, but I actually like gluten and vegan. I don't like, and I love steaks, big ones. But I'm very specific when I order. So over the next five years, welcome to the beginning. I'm all about, thank God it's Monday. And that's how you should look at it. You have one chance to make a different my difference, my friends. I'm telling you, you got one chance. You got to focus on doing better. You got to focus on how we're going to get better, make more money, more profitable business. Some of our business that we book isn't even that profitable. Life's too short to be negative. Anyone on your team that's negative, give them 30 days. I tell you, they'll turn around or they'll leave. I love that. You have 30 days to be positive or you can go. Now, HR, they call me. I don't care. I say what? You're a resource to humans. Figure it out. Keep your word. Always keep moving forward. Lead with passion and never give up because the headlines of yesterday are gone. The applause dies, all the awards go away. What matters is what you're doing today. What matters is what you're doing for your family, your friends, your colleagues, the people that work for you. So go out there and make a sale. Live it, plan it, think it, ink it, do whatever you've got to do to disrupt that status quo. And that's 
how the wave won't tip you upside down. So thank you very much, and I'm very excited to be a part of this conference. Thank you. Thank you.